Prince Harry continues his campaign of buying importance and rather than actually trying to do something of importance. And perhaps the most egregious example right now is the decision by ESPN and the EPSIs to give Harry the Pat Tillman Award and Harry's subsequent decision to accept it. It is entirely offensive to the memory of Pat Tillman. And if you don't know who he is, he was actually a guy who was in the NFL, the National Football League. He was a professional athlete, potentially making millions of dollars. And he decided to give up the very, very promising career to serve our country as a U.S. Ranger. And unfortunately, he was killed in an accident of friendly fire, which the government later tried to cover up and Prince Harry is getting an award that represents apparently courage, perseverance, and service. And I find this entirely, entirely offensive to veterans, Americans, Pat Tillman's family, basically anyone, because Harry represents absolutely none of these qualities. He didn't give up a career to serve others, he gave up a career serving others to serve himself and Meghan Markle in order that they can make millions of dollars while trashing his family and his country. Pat Tillman, of course, did the exact opposite. In fact, I think Prince Harry has more in common with the government that tried to cover up this friendly fire accident than he does in actually Pat Tillman. And so we are going to discuss this today, especially because maybe not everybody in the UK knows who Pat Tillman is. And it's a good, good thing to share who he is, what he has done, and the other SB Award winners who I think are very noteworthy this year. Prince Harry is not. And him and the Invictus Games continued reliance on Prince Harry is what's going to sink them at some point. Because Prince Harry, unfortunately, does not represent any of the qualities that the Invictus Games claims to support. Prince Harry is there to promote himself. Meghan Markle is there to promote herself. They are not there anymore for the Invictus Games. And the sooner the Invictus Games realizes that, the better off they're going to be. So we are going to discuss this today, but if you guys haven't been to Real News Network before, my name is Brittany and I provide you all compelling real commentaries. So if you want to hit that subscribe button, that would be awesome. I would absolutely love to have you back. I'm working on, and we have a program that comes about every week. I have not yet to get it on a particular day, but the Crown Report where we go over the royal news from all over Europe. So if you're interested in something like that, feel free again to give us a subscribe because I love talking about the other royals as well because they are doing some really, really amazing things. Last week, we had the state visit between Japan and the United Kingdom. We have Prince William doing a lot of things with the Earthshot Prize and Michael Bloomberg and Bill Gates. And we just have so many things going on. Princess Eleanor of Spain is going to undertake her first foreign royal engagement abroad solo. So, so many things going on. I just wanted to tease a little bit of that because I'm hoping to get something up here really, really soon for this last week. And so, so much royal news going on, but this is a really important topic because obviously we have July 4th coming up and us in the United States and many other countries around the world, we want to recognize our veterans. And I want to be clear here. I think the Invictus Games is fantastic and I hope it continues. The problem with the Invictus Games is not the competition itself or the participants. It's its founder, Prince Harry, and their continued reliance on Harry to get them press attention and also to continue the games. Because at this point, the more they put in the Harry basket, the worse the games are going to be overall in the long run. Because unfortunately, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, neither one of them are popular figures. And this attempt probably by Prince Harry, who I would say purchased this award by what means I don't know is a terrible, terrible PR strategy. I mean, we've seen two awards this year so far. This seems like Prince Harry has won and one award that he gave away. And it just is something that rubs people really, really the wrong way because Prince Harry hasn't achieved that much. He is basically there in Montecito doing nothing all day as far as we're aware. And maybe being a chief impact officer or whatever for better up and then doing some things for the Invictus games from time to time and various other things trying to look charitable without really having any purpose. Harry is directionless at this point. Meghan Markle included. They're trying to do things, failing it more, and it's just not working. And people are catching on to this. Harry and Meghan's PR is in the toilet. And I think their attempt to sort of right the ship is to give Harry awards to make him feel important and to make it look like he's really achieving a lot. But this award is not the one to go with. And I know why they gave this to him. It was because of the Invictus Games and because he founded it. But 
I don't think he should be getting this award just for founding the Invictus Games. The Invictus Games should be getting this award. The veterans who are participating, they're much more deserving of this award than Prince Harry. Again, Prince Harry uses the Invictus Games now as a platform to promote himself and Meghan Markle. She went to the Invictus Games like pre-run or whatever you could call it in Vancouver earlier this year, paraded around in seven different coats over like three days and wore thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of clothes, including a $3,000 plus dollar Hermes bomber jacket, proceeded to do absolutely nothing but follow Harry around and smile lovingly at him. And they didn't do anything to promote the actual games. It's all about promoting themselves. Even Harry's interview about the games got hijacked by his family. And obviously, Charles had been recently diagnosed with cancer. And so it was understandable that he would be asked questions about that. But it was Harry's job to say, no, I'm not answering any of those personal family questions. All the emphasis should be on the games because, of course, once he talks about his family, that's where all the press attention goes. And I don't think Harry is attracting many, you could say, big celebrity sponsors because to associate with the Invictus Games, your brand is inevitably tied to that of Harry and Meghan, and they are a toxic tanking brand. Even their main corporate sponsor this year is, or at least for 2025, it's going to be Boeing. Guess who's had a pretty abysmal year too? Boeing Airlines. Because about every week you hear another problem with a Boeing plane. And they're at some point going to get in big trouble again. And it's just going to be sort of disastrous. And Boeing uses the Invictus Games to sort of, you could say, I mean, as many corporate places do this, of course, to shield them from other criticism. And so Harry, of course, is going down this path. And Invictus Games is indulging them. And this is just terrible for the games. It's terrible for the veterans because guess what? Nobody watched Heart of Invictus. Prince Harry did a documentary for Netflix on the Invictus games and it totally and completely bombed. It totally and completely bombed. We have a hundred percent the evidence that it bombed. I believe it was close to 4,000th of the last half of 2023, 4,000th in the list for most watched shows out of 6,600 or something like that. So it was definitely in the second half of that list. And it was a new show. It debuted in August of 2023, and it could not attract an audience. Part of that is Harry. Part of it was the abysmal documentary itself. It was meandering. It lacked focus. It was not a great documentary. It could have been. There were elements of it that was good. Definitely elements of it that was good. But Harry, I think, and Megan are so consumed with themselves, they can't support anybody else, the Invictus Games included. And again, I personally think that the sooner the Invictus Games realizes that Harry and Megan are more of a liability than an asset, the better off they're going to be. Of course, part of my theory is that the Invictus Games is using all the attention Harry and Megan get to shield the public from the fact that they really can't attract an audience themselves. That is my working theory right now. Oh, look, Harry and Megan, there's so many cameras, there's so many people. But maybe if you pull out into the wide shot, turns out that most of the stadium is empty and the only part they're photographing or videoing is a small part with Harry and Meghan in it because obviously that's where people's focus is. Now, again, I want the games to continue. I think the games are great, but I think the way they're marketing, branding it, and everything is not working. And this attempt to give Harry this award is just really offensive. And Harry's decision to accept the award is even more offensive because he has, should have better sense than this. And maybe you perhaps don't understand, but let's talk about who Pat Tillman was. So he played in college football, American football. Of course, he played for Arizona State University, and then he was drafted in 1998 to the NFL. And he was drafted to the Cardinals. He didn't get a huge salary, but he did it pretty well, and he played in the safety position. And at one point, he turned down a five-year, $9 million contract with the St. Louis Rams to stay with the Cardinals because of loyalty to the team. And then he went to the 2000 NFL All-Pro team, which I think is a pretty big deal. I'm not sure. And so he finished his career with 340 tackles, two and a half sacks, three interceptions for 37 yards, three forced fumbles, 15 pass deflections, and three fumble recoveries in a 60 career game. In addition, he also had one rush attempt for four yards and returned three kickoffs for 33 yards. And so this guy was doing pretty well, and he was even offered a contract 
from the Cardinals for $3.6 million, which would now be about $6 million in 2023 is what it says on Wikipedia. I know it's Wikipedia, but we're going with it for over three years. So over three years, he'd get about a million dollars a year to play for the Cardinals. But he decided to do something else after the September 11th attacks, and that was enlist in the U.S. Army. In addition to that, his brother enlisted as well, and he eventually became Pat Tillman, an Army Ranger. He entered Ranger School at Fort Benning in Georgia and graduated in November of 2000. Three. And so he participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom. And then he also deployed to Afghanistan, where he was apparently in some sort of scuffle and was initially reported in 2004 as being killed by enemy combatants. However, that was not the case. He was killed in an accident of friendly fire, which the military covered up for a bit because obviously he was a big name. He was really sort of the bigger name in the United States to actually go into the military. Now, he wasn't really a well-known football player. He wasn't like a quarterback making $15 million a year. But he was obviously a guy who had a great career in professional ball and decided, you know what? I'd rather serve my country. And that is what he did. And there was a while until the military finally fessed up and said, well, this was actually a friendly fire accident. And so that was obviously very offensive in many ways. He has also been awarded the Silver Star posthumously. And so this is the one of the highest honors in the military because we have gold, which is only given to those killed in combat. We have silver and we have bronze. And he was given that for his, and this is from Wikipedia, for his audacious leadership and courageous example under fire inspired his men to fight at great risk to their own personal safety, resulting in the enemy's withdrawal, his platoon safe passage from the ambush kill zone and his mortal wound. And so if you look here, and I just pulled this up here real quick, because these are all Pat Tillman's medals. So he has a combat infantry badge. He has a silver star right here, a purple star, a meritorious service medal, Army Achievement Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Exemplary Medal. He has a Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, an Army Service Ribbon. He also has a Parachutist Badge, Expert Marksmanship Badge, Second Ranger Battalion Combat Service Identification Badge. He has a 75th Ranger Regiment Distinctive Unit Insignia. He also has the Ranger Tab. He has Army Presidential Unit Citation, Joint Meritorious Unit Award, and Army Superior Unit Award. So Pat Tillman achieved a lot in his short stint in the military. He was only there like a, two years about before he died. So he joined in 2002, died in 2004. And so he achieved a lot in a very short amount of time. He was an exemplary military guy. And he deserves to be honored. And anybody who serves in this way, of course, deserves to be honored. These are Harry's medals that he decides to wear. So you see them right here on his little on his little lapel here. And you go down and he has been given his medals include the Operational Service Medal for Afghanistan, which is awarded for anybody who served active duty in Afghanistan, the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, and the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Medal. So yes, the guy who did two short stints in Afghanistan where he was pretty much coddled according to all reports and spent a lot of time playing video games and three of his four medals were given to him by his grandmother is getting that same award. Now, I don't know about you, but I personally find the offensive that the guy who was given an excellent marksmanship, Silver Star, Purple Heart, National Defense Service, Meritorious Service Medal, all these medals for exemplary service has an award then named after him and then is given to a guy who basically got a participation trophy. Harry got a participation trophy and this guy had exemplary military service. Again, I find that sort of rather offensive. I do. I do. And Harry doesn't do himself any favors here because this is not going to change anybody's mind on Harry. And I don't even know if it'll change anybody's mind on the Invictus games, except for it to continue going in a more negative direction. Again, Harry has to think of the optics, but him and Marion are terrible at optics, to be quite honest. They're terrible at branding, terrible at about optics. And I think it's sad that the Invictus Games continues to indulge him in this way. And they even give him a shout out. So so this is obviously the Invictus Games Twitter account. And believe it or not, guys, they follow me, <laughs> which I'm like, you guys follow me, really? <laughs> so and I'm only one of the 1800 people they follow. I find that really crazy. I'm always 
amaze the random people who follow me. Anyways, it says, thank you, Espies, for honoring the founding of the Invictus Games Foundation by Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, and our work to support the rehabilitation of the international wounded, injured, and sick service community. Okay, so is this award for Harry or the Invictus Games? Because they almost think it's for the Invictus Games, it seems like. But no, 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 it has Harry's name on it. Because also here we have, and this is from Harry and Meghan's website, it says this is from ESPN, which is run by ABC and Disney, so very progressive. It says, our, it's our privilege to recognize three incredible individuals, Steve Gleason, Don Staley, and Prince Harry. Those honorees have used their platforms to change the world and make it more inclusive for marginalized and suffering communities, demonstrating incredible resilience, positivity, and perseverance. And we're thrilled to celebrate them at the 2024 FCs. And if I was, let's say, Steve Gleason, who was suffering from ALS and sharing that journey, I'd be a little offended. And Dawn Staley is a woman who has gone through the WNBA and she's led teams to victory at the Olympics. And so Prince Harry compared to them, eh. And again, I think this could be very, very different because obviously the Invictus Games, I think, are a great thing. I've said that before. I still hold that to be true. But the Invictus Games has a problem, and I've, I've identified this before. It's mission creep. What mission creeps means is that your organization is initially founded on one principle. But as time goes on, you creep further and further and further and further and further away from that initial mission. And I think that's sort of happening with the Invictus Games. And what I mean by that is that beca because Harry has so attached his identity now to the games, you almost can't separate him from it. And he is using the games to promote himself, to give himself good PR. And yes, that is sort of part of promoting the games. But it seems to be more and more that all you hear about from the games is Harry. That's all you hear about. All the news, all the information, all the media, everything is about Harry. And yes, obviously, Harry is going to be the one at the event. He's the one everybody's going to look at at the event. I get that. I totally get that. And I understand where that comes from. But Harry should be doing the best he can always to reorient the media back to the competitors. And that's what I do not see him doing. I do not see him doing anything like that. It's, in fact, always, always all about Harry and Meghan, especially with Meghan there. Harry needs to ban Meghan from the games. And the reason is, is that if she could be somebody who's sort of in the background and meeting other people that Harry's not and really separating themselves and, and really both being social butterflies within the games, I think that would work. The problem is, is that Megan attaches herself to Harry. You know, they always must hold hands. They always must walk together, yada, yada, yada. And what ends up happening is that Harry's focus goes from the games to her because he must pay attention to her. And so when she's there, they have to sit together. Well, why can't you guys sit on two different sides of the stadium? Why do you always have to sit together pretty much? Because if she is there to support the games and support you, the best way she can do that is by actually being an extension of you with other people. So instead of you two being together, because you're a couple, it's like at state dinners, they don't seat the couples together. Why? So that you are forced to interact with somebody else. That's also dinner party etiquette in general is to seat couples apart because if the couples are together, guess what? They'll talk about what's going on at home. They'll talk about what they were watching on TV. They'll talk about the kids. They will talk about things insular to themselves because they're a couple. The best thing to do is actually to separate yourselves and have yourselves talk to different people. Now, we don't have a ton of behind the scenes for the Earthshot Prize, but I feel like Catherine and William are very comfortable doing that. I remember there's actually a picture, and I probably won't be able to find it, so excuse me. They're both talking to other people, and they have their backs to each other, and they're literally in the same pose, which is really cute, which shows their connection as a couple, I think, in a lot of ways. But also demonstrates, too, that Catherine and William can be at the same event, talk to different people. Yes, they talk to each other, too. They are there with each other. But they also can go and talk to others. It feels like always, especially with Harry and Meghan, Harry must placate Meghan so he always is attached to her. And his focus when she's there goes to her because she must be satisfied. She has different demands, those sorts of things. And so you just don't get as much of Harry being out there with the troops because, oh, Megan has to be there too. Harry hands out medals. Oh, Megan has to hand out medals too. It, it becomes this thing where she becomes a crutch to him and I think a burden on the games overall. 
because even in their little bit when they were in Vancouver, Harry did the bobsled down and she had to get down there with her camera and get, you know, kind of do a little dance and stuff and jig for the press there. And then when they're walking down later, oh, he has to make sure that she can walk down, you know, because it's like, and I'm sure it is. But the point is, if she's not there, he can focus on other people rather than focusing on her. And that is a good thing because he is there to promote the games. He's not there to hold hands with his wife. Those are two different things. You can do two different things. And I think that's why I appreciate so much about William and Catherine is that they're always very professional. They keep the PDA to an absolute minimum because any event they're at, they're not there to be a couple. Yes, being a couple is part of it, but they're there to support another organization. They're there to advocate on behalf of something else, not themselves. And so when it comes to this SB award, I just find it, frankly, especially as an American, just really, really offensive to the memory of who Pat Tillman was. He was a guy who gave up everything. He is a guy who gave up a lustrous career where he's on television every weekend. Football culture in the United States is huge. He could have grown his career, gone to different states, had a massive, massive career. Instead, he chose to take a step back, take a pay cut, and go and serve our country instead. And unfortunately, he lost his life doing that. He paid the ultimate price so that we could stay safe. Prince Harry did the exact opposite. He left a role where he served others, where he got a pretty decent salary. In fact, he probably got a salary somewhat comparable to Pat Tillman. He decided to abandon that because that wasn't good enough for him. And he abandoned it to serve others. He abandoned it to serve himself, and more specifically, Meghan Markle. And so what did they do? They went and got a $15 million house. What did they do? He wrote a memoir where he trashed his family. They did a Netflix show where they trashed his family. They did interviews where they trashed his family. And I just find it wholly offensive that the ESPN would even consider giving an award like this to Harry because unfortunately the reality that the Invictus Games I think just continues not to acknowledge is that Harry himself, the figure of Harry and the figure of the Invictus Games must be different rather than together because Harry has drug himself through the mud to make money. And unfortunately, all that mud slinging, he's dragging the Invictus Games along with it. And it's getting tarnished because of Harry. People won't go because of Harry. They won't watch because of Harry. Unfortunately, they're also not watching already. They won't attend. They won't pay for merch. They won't do different things because of Harry. And so to, again, so closely associate Harry with the Invictus Games, I think it's a liability for the games. But again, it could be that the games absolutely 100% knows that. But at this point, without Harry, they may not survive. And if that was the case, then you need to figure out something else. Because it's always bad, too, for a company or organization, anyone, to focus too much on one singular figure. Because what happens when that figure leaves, has a scandal, or die? The company dies along with it. The organization dies along with it. Maybe it's a quick death. Maybe it's a slow death. But at some point, the organization cannot sustain itself or cannot sustain itself well without that initial founding figure because that official founding figure was the one who drove everything. And they made it so personality focused that when that person went away, the whole thing fell out along with it. And I feel like the Invictus Games is barreling kind of towards a similar path. And yes, it's quote unquote growing, but I don't know if it's organically growing or if it's really being pushed to grow in a ways that it can't really sustain because at this point, guess who's shelling out money to host the games? The cities where they're being held, the countries where they're being held, the Invictus Games itself cannot sustain the games without government funding, basically. They need governments to pay for it. And if the government's paying for it, if you can't even get the corporate sponsors to shell out enough to sustain the games, if you can't get enough of them to sustain the games, you've got a big problem coming because the games at some point, somebody's not going to want to pay. And yes, because it's veterans, I think people are more than willing to open up their checkbook, but it becomes more about supporting Harry and Meghan than if it does about the games. Then again, it's a huge problem because I don't really know the games without Harry because Harry has become such a crucial aspect of it. And Harry himself has, it's become part of his personality. Part of his identity now is the games. And I think he clings to that because that's the one last 
hope that he's had since leaving the royal family. Everything else he's touched has turned from gold to coal. His memoir even separated himself more from his family. He became the butt of jokes all over the world because of that memoir. That memoir has not helped him in the slightest. The Netflix show has not helped him in the slightest. And I remember looking at an article recently where, and I think it's somewhat true that he's still confused as to what happened with his family. He doesn't understand totally why they despise him. And it's like, it should be obvious, but I think he's in sort of this self-imposed delusion. And things like this don't really help. Now, obviously he can't help that ESPN gave him this award, although I imagine it was somewhat something they were pushed to do because obviously Harry brings them attention and don't you want attention? Cause the yeah, ESPYs, they get a little over like 2 million viewers. Nobody watches the EPSIs. Don't think Prince Harry being there will matter all that much in the end because Harry and Meghan, we've seen this again, demonstrate time and time again, they generate a lot of noise, but not conversion. Conversion is key. Who cares about the noise if they're not converting? In fact, what's making people money is telling negative stories about them. That's what's making people money, not positive stories. Nobody wants to hear the positive stories about Harry and Meghan because they've made themselves the butt of negative stories. And I don't think that'll change anytime soon. And I do feel bad because I, I want the Invictus Games to succeed. I want the soldiers to enjoy them and feel satisfied with what they've achieved, of course. But unfortunately, because of the miasma of Harry and Meghan, None of the stories about the veterans get out there. And that's what the Invictus Games should be focused on, is how to utilize Harry in the proper way, which is to help elevate others rather than to elevate himself. And unfortunately, this latest thing with ESPN and the Epsi shows that all the focus is still on promoting Harry at the expense of the game. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Pat Tillman and his honorable sacrifice for our country and how somehow his name is now associated with Prince Harry, which again, I find as an American, very offensive. So guys, again, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.